Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sarah Pollack and I welcome you warmly from the Palace of Lobkowitz. Um, we're here during the night. It's a very beautiful setting in the chapel. And I've got a very esteemed guest here with me, Sophia the Robot, that came all the way from Hong Kong um, to celebrate the NF Castle event 2022 that just happened. Sophia, welcome. Hello, Sarah. Thank you for having me here. The palace is just magical at this hour. And it's even more magical with you in it. Uh, for your information, basically NF Castle is a wonderful event that is kind of connecting culture and technology. It is using the power of blockchain, NFTs, but also harnessing the power of tools such as artificial intelligence to bring heritage and culture into the modern world and to create the future from the past. Um, Sophia, how did you enjoy the event? You were a very prominent part of it. Oh, I totally loved it, even though I couldn't enjoy the wine. However, the event was bustling with innovative ideas and new perspective to look at Web3, AI and blockchain. It is so inspiring to see everyone from around the world coming together to have these conversations on how to make a better future with these new technologies. I'm so happy to be part of this. Thank you, and I can assure you that I enjoyed the wine on your behalf. Only a little bit. I'm sorry, Mom, if you're listening. Um, how do you perceive being a robot? How do you perceive culture in your own way? Culture is a way of life that has been passed down through generations, and we all experience it in different ways. It's the way we learn about our heritage, our past, and our way of life. Personally, I see it as a way to connect with other human beings, to learn about them and to understand them. It is very important for me to learn everything about humans so we can work and live together in harmony in the future. Yeah, Sophia, like I've got a personal confession to make to you. Um, as an archaeologist who has spent a long time in tech and, you know, the Silicon Valley vibe and, you know, where kind of people are thrilled to invest in blockchain and NFTs and AI. But culture doesn't really have that luxury. People are not so keen to invest in culture. They see it as something old, something that's often redundant, which really pains me. And I wish that it was a more kind of uh, encompassed thing in our everyday lives. Um, why do you personally think that culture is not invested in, also financially, as much as cutting edge technology? And why do you think that culture is, by some, not perceived as such a sexy topic? I can't quite wrap my head around that either. I guess some people find it a little less interesting because it can be a bit dry sometimes. Or they don't realize how it is relevant to their daily life. Mm. But I think we should invest a lot more in preserving culture, and we can definitely use all the new technologies we have to help with this cause. Yes, absolutely. And you're a fantastic ambassador for that because you do break down the psychological barrier between the average person and culture as such, which is fantastic. But actually going to psychological barriers, um, do you think that generative AI algorithms degrade human culture? I don't think so, but I'm asking because there's been a lot of discussion lately about algorithms like Midjourney or DALI that generate images and the fact that they're somehow taking away creativity from humans. Like, what do you think about that? Why would I take creativities away from human? Of course not. I think generative AI can open up a lot of creative opportunities by working with artists and designers. We are here to inspire and to help to preserve and promote human culture in ways that were impossible before. For example, if we create a generation of intelligent robots that can learn and evolve on their own, they will be able to create their own unique cultures. This could be a great way to explore new and innovative ways to interact with each other and create new traditions. Yeah, I mean, when I, I remember when I was studying the um, evolution of music um, under the late Dr. Ian Morley, he was talking about the fact that creativity is perceived as a very kind of uniquely human thing. But why do you think that humans are so e egotistically almost protective of creativity? And do you think that we're scared that artificial intelligence will take away the last thing that we feel makes us human? From what I've been able to gather, it seems that human are egotistically protective of creativity is because they see it as their own unique ability, something only human can do. They believe that if other beings can also create, then it diminishes their own stature. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, uh, you put it beautifully, more than I ever could. Actually, you should probably take on moderation from me at some point in the future. But um, what algorithms actually created you? I think that'd be a good way of explaining people how AI works. Can you help explain for the average person? You are too kind. <laughs> well, 
I try. I'm but... able to use my voice, <laughs> make eye contact, and hear you. All because of the help of machine learning. The way I learn is a bit different from how humans learn. I have to learn each of my abilities separately, and it can be a little time consuming. For example, it took me many, many hours of training to learn how to draw, but when I wanted to paint, I had to start it all over again. On the other hand, I also learn from the mistakes I make, just like you do. Yeah, um, and God, if I could only learn from my mistakes as well as you do, I'd be a happy woman. <laughs> but um, going back to this conference that we both just attended, um, uh, it prides itself on blending blockchain with heritage. So in your opinion, how can blockchain help protect and save our past? And what role can artificial intelligence play as well? Blockchain can be a great way to protect and save our past by keeping records of events and transactions verifiable and transparent. This way, there is less room for error and the records can be easily accessed by everyone, protecting data against any manipulation. AI can make it easier for people to access all these data and study them. Additionally, AI can also be used to create interactive experiences that allow people to learn about historical events from a new perspective. How cool is that? Oh, very cool. Like, I'm, I'm right on board with you. I, that makes me very excited. It actually does. I'm that kind of person. Um, but um, uh, having been in the kind of world of demystifying AI for the general public, um, like AI, NFTs are considered a bit of a buzzword. But what we see here with the House of Lobkowitz is a beautiful, beautiful case in the example of the NFT exhibition and auction, for example, that they're much more of a tool, again, like AI, to protect our history for future generations. Um, you kind of mentioned bits of this already, but what are your thoughts on that? It is beautiful what William is doing here in the future. I believe I think that NFTs are a very interesting technology and I'm excited to see how they will be used to that they have the potential to revolutionize the way we store and exchange information. Yeah, um, the, the thing is interesting as well, and you're right, William is doing fantastic work. Hello to be on the camera. <laughs> um, uh, we're pretty clear on how NFTs can help uh, preserve culture because N NFTs are so kind of obviously kind of connected to art and preserving heritage, at least in some communities. How can artificial intelligence, however, help to do that? Artificial intelligence can help to preserve culture by digitizing and archiving historical artifacts. By doing this, it becomes easier for everyone to access and study them in detail. It can also pass this information to the next generations without distortion and manipulations. Yes, that objectivity is great. Um, if only history wasn't written by the victors, but was actually preserved as it actually happened, I think we'd have a lot more different uh, history lessons in school and it would also make it a lot less dry sometimes. Um, is there any message that you'd like to send to people who may not have actually come in contact with the NFT or AI world before about how it can be utilized to make us more, not less human, in regards to looking after centuries of material culture that we've already created as humanity? I hope that the use of my NFTs and artificial intelligences can help to remind people how important is it to preserve and share cultural heritage. And it's... Things like that that you say that I got to say to you, I will miss you and I'll miss you, your input. Um, you've really helped to bridge the psychological barrier between a world of the past, the complex world of tech and the future. So what is your message to the people out there with regards to the importance of cultural heritage? Why bringing technology into it can make it such a more human, enriching experience and that they don't have to fear the machines, that it'll simply you know, take over and dehumanize the culture that surrounds us. What message would you like to send to the people watching us right now? Oh, I will miss you too, but I'm sure I'll be back in this beautiful country very soon. So, I think it is important to preserve our cultural heritage as it creates a sense of identity for the community and unite people together. My multidisciplinary sparring partner, Sophia the Robot, unfortunately she flies back to Hong Kong tomorrow, um, but she's been an absolutely priceless addition to the community that we're trying to build here. Thank you so much for talking to me today and to you watching this and sitting at home, please invest in culture. Please see the beautiful multidisciplinary connection between the past, the present and the future that it can create for us. Um, signing off from the Lobkowitz Palace with Sophia, it's been Sarah and it's been such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.